Okay, welcome back to my maths channel, Mr. Hassan's maths channel. Here we have a question, question number eight from the specimen paper four of the new IGCSE 2020 syllabus. This question is about trigonometry. The, gr the grid shows a graph of y equals cosine x for x value between 0 and 36, three, sorry, 360 degrees. And the graph is already drawn for us between 0 and 360. And this is something we should know. We should know how the graph looks between these values. And we should realize that it starts at 0, 1, then it goes, curves down to 90, 0, then 180, minus 1, then 270, 0, then 361. We should have an idea how to sketch this if it's not given to us in the question. All right, now, it says solve the equation 3 cosine x equals 1 for x between 0 and 360, giving your answers correct to one decimal place. So what we need to do here is we need to uh, rearrange this from 3 cosine x equals 1 to cosine x equals 1 third. So make cosine x the subject and then we want to solve this equation so we need to find what is the angle which has a cosine ratio of one third to do, to do that we we write down x equals the inverse cosine of one third that tells us which angle has this as its cosine uh, ratio has one third as its cosine ratio and when we put this into our calculator we should get in fact there's many angles that has one third as its uh, ratio but the calculator gives us what's called the principal solution okay so i'll just get the calculator out okay here we have it okay so we've got to make sure that we are in uh ray in degree mode okay so we can press shift and menu and it says angle angle unit is two so then we check that we are in degree mode i'm just showing you how to do it but you'll know when you see there's a little d at the top of the calculator that that's in degree mode if it says r or g you must change it to degree mode in this particular calculator, that's how, how it's done. I'll show you in case uh, some of you have a different calculator. In a different calculator like this one, you press mode and you press, hold on, do you press mode? Yeah, you go, yeah, for this calculator, you press shift and then mode and then you choose three for degree. That makes it into degree, that's for that type of calculator. All right, now, so now it's in degree mode, I press inverse cosine of one-third so one-third and that will give me the angle in degrees I should have really closed that bracket it didn't make a difference my answer I think but there we have the the answer um, I'm going to write it to more than one decimal place and round at the end so I'll write this as 70.52 oops 70.52 okay 70 Point five two degrees. Now, as we can see from the graph, it's, I'm happy that you drew the graph here because I would have done it anyway just to show you um, what's going on. Basically, what we've just done is we found uh, the value or one angle for which the cosine curve hits the line y equals one third. If you think about it in terms of graphs of functions, if that's the line y equals one third, okay, which is actually going to be slightly higher than that, if that's y equals one third, then you can see that it hits the curve in this range in two places. One is over here, and one is over there. Now the calculator only gave us this one here. This is the one that we just found, which is 70.52. That's the angle that we found in the calculator. And the calculator will only give you ever the principal solution, okay, which for now you can understand as the one that's closest to zero. Okay, It will, it will not give you this angle here although this angle also has the same cosine ratio of a third in fact this curve actually continues on and on forever in both directions continues on with the same pattern and every 360 degrees away from like 360 degrees away from here and 360 degrees less than here you will have uh, you know the same cosine ratio that is shared by those angles okay so there's an infinite number of solutions actually to this but we all we're concerned about is finding solutions between 0 and 360 in IGCSE work so how do we find this other angle that's what that's the question we're going to ask ourselves. well we can use the fact as we can see very clearly that this graph is symmetrical about 180 degrees when you're looking at if you're focusing at 0 to 360 
There's like a line of symmetry. This is like a line of symmetry. Okay, I'll make it a bit thinner and dotted. This is like a line of symmetry, 180 degrees. It's symmetrical about here. So basically the distance between uh, these values, the distance between that angle okay, and zero must be the same as this distance here because it's symmetrical. Okay, you can see the shape is symmetrical. So this distance between here and here must be also 70.52. So basically, if we do 360 minus 70.52, 70 we find what this angle is. Because from here to here is 360, from here to here is 360. Okay, and from here to here is 70.52. We want to find what this angle is. So it's 360 minus 70.52. So the other angle is 360 minus 70.52. So we take our answer in the calculator. We do 360, take away the answer, and we get 289.47. So that's equal to 289.47. And those are the two angles within our range. So we've got 70.5 to one decimal place and 289.5 to, to one decimal place, both of them to one decimal place. And there we have answered this question. Now, um, if they didn't have the graph there for you, you should still basically understand this concept that for the cosine curve, the, there's symmetry, um, um, you know, and the 180 degrees is like the line of symmetry. So basically, if you know one angle, then the other angle will always be 360 minus the angle that you have. Will always be 360 minus the angle that you have. That's for the cosine curve. For cosine, when you're solving, uh, uh, you know, you're solving a, an equation, an, a trig trigonometry equation uh, for cosine x, then your calculator will give you one solution. And if the range is big enough to include up to 360, you're going to have 360 minus that solution for the other angle. Okay, and for the sine curve, I'll first draw the sine curve and explain what happens with the sine curve. It says, on the same grid, sketch the graph of y equals sine x for the same value. So now we've got to draw on this grid the graph of y equals sine x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of these things that I've already drawn there so that it doesn't get in the way. So let me just get this done. Just, I'll just get rid of all of these lines that I've made so that it doesn't look too cluttered. Right, because they want us to draw on this same graph y equals sine x. And you should know what y equals sine x looks like, but if you forgot, supposing you forgot what y equals sine x looks like, well, you can bring your calculator to the rescue. Say, okay, what was it when the angle is zero? What's the sine of zero? We'll press sine of zero. It'll give you zero degrees. Make sure that you are in degree mode, though, so you know it goes through this point here. And then I forgot what the sine of 90 is, okay? Sine of 90, you can put it in here, and you'll see that equals 1. So we know that it's going to go up to 1. And then sine of 180, if you did the same thing, you'll find that sine of 180 is 0, and you'll find that the sine of 270 is negative 1, and the sine of 360 is 0 again. So it's going to have this type of shape, which is the same shape as this. Okay, it's the same shape as this, but it's like moved along a bit. So it's kind of a similar kind of shape. If you continue it on, they'll look very similar, just they're out of shift with each other. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best with this instrument that I have here, this uh, tablet, to try to uh, draw this in the best way that I can, but I can't guarantee you that it will be as good as what I would do if it was paper and pencil. But anyway, so when you do something like this, try and be neat as possible. Okay, they don't expect perfection. Okay, that's... It's all right, not too bad. And similarly, I'm going to do the same, same thing here. Now, what I would do if I had the paper in front of me, I would probably turn the page upside down so my hand is inside, like my hand is inside the arc here. It's a bit easier. This is going to be a bit more difficult to do properly. I'll try my best. Whoops. I went out, of course, there. <laughs> Let me start again. Okay, so I'm going to go down, up like this, and reach a maximum there, and it will go down to 360. Okay, that's not bad could be better but that's I think that will that will get you the marks for it y equals sine x and it told us to draw this and that was it 
part B, that's it, nothing else. Okay, so that's the sketch. So if you if you do forget how it looks, then you would basically um, put the values of 0, 90, 180, 270, 360 in your calculator and then you'll see, ah, oh, that's how it goes. Okay, it has the same kind of shape as a, the cosine curve. This is y equals cosine x. Okay, now I'm going to diverge a little bit because supposing the question told us to solve, for example, sine x equals one third. Supposing that was a question, then we'll put in we'll put inverse sine of one third, and it will give us an angle somewhere in this area here. Okay, it will give us an angle somewhere in this area over here, somewhere like over in this area here. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll just put it in to see. So inverse sine of one third. Oops. And that gives us 19.47. Okay, now, 19.47. Now, this is not the question asked. I'm just showing you what happens if we, if we were told to solve for sine. Okay, so 19.47. Now, in this case, the, the, cosine, the sine curve is not symmetrical about 180. You can see that. Okay, because, you know, it's like it goes down here. It's got rotational symmetry about 180, but that's different. But what it has, it has symmetry about 90 degrees. Okay, if you look, if you think about that, it's symmetrical about that line here. So there's going to be um, another, this angle is 19.47. Between 180 and, and somewhere over here, there's going to be another angle which shares that same sine ratio. There'll be another angle somewhere over here. So if I just drew a line like this, you can see there's going to be another angle somewhere around here which shares the same sine ratio. So this, this distance here is also 19.47. So basically for the sine curve, for sine, inverse sine of, um, um, of one third, there will be two angles. One is 19.47 and one is 180 minus 19.47. Okay, that's how you would solve for the sine curve. Okay, so for the cosine curve, it's always one angle the calculator gives and then 360 minus that angle. And for the sine, it's always going to be the first angle the calculator gives and the second angle will be 180 minus that angle. Okay, so that's how you do with the sine and the cosine. The, cur the, the tan is actually a lot easier because the tan curve, whoops, the tan curve, or basically, um, it just repeats every 180. So whatever you get, you just add 180 to it and you keep adding 180 or subtracting 180 until you're out of the range. And that's basically that. Okay, so... Um, that's how you deal with um, how to do these trig equations and curves in IGCSE. In, in AS level, you go a bit more deeper and maybe solve for a, ra a larger range of, of values of um, the angle, but that comes later on. Thank you for watching. I hope that was clear. This is also a new kind of uh, uh, focus on this that wasn't there before in previous type of questions. I've noticed that they're, they're kind of like putting a bigger focus on the trig, trig curves and trig equations so it's something you should practice and you won't find much of this in the older papers okay so you must take care of that okay so if you want to see other questions from this paper click here if you want to see other paper of other questions on this topic click here and if you want to subscribe to the channel click over there thank you for watching